We are so excited to be talking now to the co-author of Materials Engineering, Bonding Structure and Structure Property Relationships, Susan Trollier McKinstry. Nice to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about your book. Who is the target audience and who is the subject matter? Or what is the subject matter? So this is a book that I based off two classes that I teach at Penn State which are designed to provide students an understanding of what crystal structures are relevant to materials that they will encounter during the course of the rest of their career. So we talk about what are the bonds that hold the solids together, uh, what are the crystal structures that make up the atomic arrangements, and then what are the implications of that in terms of all of the important properties of solids that are ultimately what govern why we use particular materials for particular applications. I teach this at an undergraduate level uh, for, um, which is essentially the second class in material science and engineering that students see at Penn State. I also teach a graduate version of this, which in many ways functions to the introduction of material science at the graduate level. And so how does this book specifically differ from other books on the same topic? So there actually are very few books available that correlate structure and properties in a general way. And so many books on structure combine what crystal structures are with how you might determine the crystal structure. But there really are not good textbooks available otherwise that allow you to see the link between bonding and how ultimately the arrangement of atoms in space produce the thermal conductivity, the refractive index, the possibility of ferroelectricity. And so that's really the niche we were trying to, to fill. We should probably mention that MRS has an active partnership with Cambridge in publishing new books. Mm -hmm. Tell us about uh, the process in publishing with MRS. So uh, when you have a book proposal, uh, that's brought to Cambridge University Press, and they do an assessment of whether or not they think that there's a market audience uh, for that textbook. They then provide, once they've decided that they'd like to, to move forward with this as a text, they provide some guidance in terms of what should a textbook look like, what kinds of things will make this more appealing, ultimately to other faculty members in the field, uh, and they provided substantial help in the production of the book as well and are now responsible for the marketing. The co-author uh, of this project with you is Robert E. Noonan, who mm -hmm. passed away prior to the publication of this. Tell us a little bit about him. My pleasure. <laughs> Bob Noonan was my thesis advisor. He was certainly one of the finest educators in the entire field of materials. He was an international reputation for the quality of his, his teaching. He was also a truly remarkable scientist. Uh, he is the man that invented the piezoelectric composite that's now used in essentially every medical transducer that's made now. Uh, towards the end of his career, uh, he went to a meeting for the American Heart Association and um, saw that the fruits of his understanding of bonding structure and structure mm -hmm. property relations had ultimately saved hundreds of thousands of lives through this invention. He basically had a very inspired application of structure property relations to say, I need to subdivide my piezoelectric so I can change the anisotropy of the properties. And so it was a very practical implementation of what, of what he was trying to do uh, in this book. Because he was a master teacher, when he retired, his goal was to publish one textbook in each of the classes that he taught for many years. He published the first on crystal physics before he passed. Uh, he and I then started the book, um, this, this particular book, and um, as he became ill, I promised him that I would finish it. So. Now it's, now it's That's done. That's beautiful. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. We know in addition to you being a scientist that you are also uh, connected to music. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about the fact that you are a musician and you know what that connection is between the two for you. Well, that's a, a good and hard <laughs> question. Uh, so I play uh, euphonium and trombone um, in several ensembles. Uh, it's actually how I met my husband. Uh, he's a professional trumpet player. I think 
there's some coupling between trying to understand how to think about science and the creativity that's required to be an artist of any kind. Uh, and so a lot, I would go away and practice for a couple hours a day all the way through my university education. And it was a kind of a time for me to change how I was thinking about problems, to just let the creative part go. And I found it to be incredibly useful in terms of saying, hmm, maybe I need to change my perspective as a scientist. Um, it's, I don't think intentional, but humorous that I mean, music is essentially acoustics. And I ended up where I am essentially because I work on materials for acoustic transduction materials and devices. And so it's turned and the understanding of sound and sound production has actually had really important science consequences for me as well. <laughs> so you feel then that mm -hmm. the connection really has lent itself to what you've been able to accomplish. Yes, yes. That's fantastic. Well, we want to let people know that uh, they can certainly get a review copy of the book, mm -hmm. uh, especially instructors. They can request one at the website, which is mm -hmm. mrs.org slash materials hyphen engineering. Susan Trollier-McKinstry, thank mm -hmm. you so much. My pleasure.